Hey there, future respiratory therapist. I'm gonna do a video for you here real quick over the basics of mechanical ventilation. And when I say the basics of mechanical ventilation, I mean the absolute bottom, most simplistic basics of mechanical ventilation. And when we talk about mechanical ventilation, we're talking about a patient now who no longer can support their acid-base balance uh, independently. And so uh, this patient's uh, CO2 levels are rising or are already high uh, and it's causing them to become acidotic. And that's because of either an acute disease process or maybe a chronic disease process that has impaired their ability to sustain life without the need of mechanical intervention. Okay, so uh, the first thing you gotta do is understand how we do that spontaneously. So me and you right now, we're breathing and supporting our own life and our own uh, ventilation uh, system, I guess, by breathing a certain number of breaths per minute. So, so our respiratory rate, and we do so by respiratory rate and then how the size of our tidal volumes, which is one single breath, okay? So respiratory rate times VT, like that is tidal volume, equals our minute ventilation. Now, I'm going to put a box around this because my personal belief no, no, no textbook supports this, okay? This is my personal belief, 20 years in the field, that leads me to believe that this formula is the most important formula that you need to know and understand as a respiratory therapist. Because when you put somebody on a ventilator, you need to understand that you're going to do these things for them and ultimately you're going to establish a minute ventilation, Okay, and so <clears throat> you got to understand this formula and understand that this is what people do every day to keep a normal acid base balance. Now, when you see somebody or you're putting somebody on a mechanical ventilator, you have to choose one of two modes. The, scratch that. You have to choose one of two concepts. There's, there's, a, there's a, a bunch of different modes. But most of the modes all break down to these two concepts. And that is, are we going to do volume ventilation or are we going to do pressure ventilation? Okay. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what which of these you choose when it comes to respiratory rate, okay? Because they are both going to have a set respiratory rate. What's going to matter is how you establish the tidal volume, okay? Now, volume ventilation is pretty simple, okay? Because you set that tidal volume. But you have to tell the ventilator how fast to give that tidal volume, okay? So do you want it to give it really quick? Do you want it to be a slow uh, tidal volume? How fast do you want it to, 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 to give it? So you have to set the tidal volume and then you have to set flow, okay? That's in volume ventilation. Now there's other settings, but if you set a respiratory rate and you set a tidal volume and a flow, then you're going to ventilate your patient. Okay? Now I know what you're thinking like, well, what about PEEP? PEEP is good. PEEP helps with oxygenation. PEEP does nothing for ventilation. Okay? So PEEP goes with oxygenation. FiO2 goes with oxygenation. But when we're talking about establishing a minute volume, we're going to set a respiratory rate. We're going to set a tidal volume and we're going to tell the vent how fast to give that tidal volume. Now, if we slide over here to pressure, we already said that we're going to set a respiratory rate. Okay. We're also going to set 
a peak inspiratory pressure. So we're going to set our PIP. Now that's different because over here we set a tidal volume, but in pressure we set what we want that peak inspiratory pressure to be. We, we tell the vent, every time you give a breath based off the set respiratory rate, instead of giving a set amount of volume, I want you to increase the pressure in the lungs up to this set PIP. Okay, now how long does it hold that pressure? That's the other setting you have to set, and that is set eye time. So you have to set the eye time, and I stands for inspiration. So the machine, every time it gives a breath, will raise the pressure to the peak inspiratory pressure, and it will hold it there for the set amount of eye time. Okay, so that's the basic difference between volume and pressure in terms of settings. Now, the other thing you have to understand is that what varies when we're in these modes. So I understand that I set this, but you have to understand that, that whatever is set, something is going to vary. Okay, and so over here on the volume side, we're going to say varies. And over here, when we're talking about what varies with volume, your PIP varies. So you set a tidal volume, but PIPs will vary, okay? So things that cause your PIP to vary are changes in compliance or changes in airway resistance, okay? So... So in volume ventilation, if your lungs become stiffer, meaning you have a decrease in compliance, your tidal volume will still be delivered, but the result will be a greater PIP, a higher peak inspiratory pressure. If your patient comes in with, with, with status asthmaticus and they have a really high airway resistance, you're, they're going to get the set tidal volume what's going to vary is going to be that PIP. So as airway resistance goes up, your PIP goes up in volume ventilation. As your compliance goes down, your PIP goes up. Okay, so if the airways get smaller or the lungs get stiffer, peak inspiratory pressure will vary and it goes up. All right, I said that like three or four or five or six times, but I said it so many times because it's important for you to understand. Now, Slide over here to the pressure side. I told you we set peak inspiratory pressure. So if we set PIP, what varies? Tidal volume. Okay, so the exact opposite is true with pressure. If your lungs become stiff or the compliance goes down, then that set pressure will still be delivered for that set eye time, but because the lungs are stiffer, your tidal volumes will go down. As your lungs become more compliant, as they get better, you will see those tidal volumes go up. Take the asthmatic, for example. They come in, their airway resistance is very, very high. You put them in pressure control. Your PIP will be deliver, delivered for that eye time, but because the airway resistance is higher, your tidal volumes will go down. As those airways open up and the patient gets better, you will see your tidal volumes go back up. Okay, now, what's key in understanding with pressure is that as the lungs become stiff or airway resistance goes up, your tidal volume goes down. The exact opposite is true as they get better, your tidal volumes will go up as the lungs become more compliant and the airway resistance goes back down to normal. Now this is important because if tidal volume varies, then also your minute ventilation will vary. Remember, respiratory rate times tidal volume. In volume ventilation, you have a set respiratory rate and a set tidal volume, so your minute ventilation is set and will not vary. Your pressures will, will vary, okay? 
So you got to be aware of barotrauma um, associated with peak inspiratory pressures getting too high. In pressure, you have to be concerned about varying tidal volumes, which will vary your minute volume, which can lead to acid-based disturbances based off of your ventilator settings that are a result of your changing uh, condition of your patient. Okay? So, when you break it down, understand if you're in a volume mode or if you're in a pressure mode, know what is set and know what varies so you can better take care of your patients. Have a great day. Go be great.